Okay, that should mean that we've gone live for the first time in 2022. <laughs> and we'd like to say thank you for everyone that's going to join us on this live stream and hopefully every fortnight for the whole of 2022. But without the special help of the following people, we couldn't make mm -hmm. it possible. And they are, Gordon, BG Lasico, our good friends at Luden Palazzoli, Whisker, Oh, sorry, Gary, I was watching that. Oh, you meant to get in there. Yeah. Our good friends at Wago. <laughs> See, you never catch you out, can I? And uh, Nipex tools that bring it all together and allow us to do these live streams. So we're going to see in 2022 if we can catch Gordon listening at any point, because the first segment's going to involve you, young man. It is, but I've just got to make sure oh, technically oh, right, that we're okay, actually tech. live first. Oh, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. So, you're, so I'm doing this bit where I move the assets around and you're just checking we're on the screen. I'm just checking sure we're on the screen. I'm, I'm so people are there and people have said we've got, yeah. And, and are we all good? That, so we're okay. all good. Yeah. Right, okay, so now you can look at your screen because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check the register like any good lesson starts with the register. Yeah, but even before the okay. register, Gary, because we don't know what the screen name is, uh, our researcher Margaret has been on the phone this week. Our researcher Margaret? That yes. sounds like a new role within the eFix Yes, yes. so Margaret's working with us on behalf of the eFix Awards, which we'll come to later. Okay. But she has started doing some initial digging. So everybody who filled in that form and put their details in, uh, Margaret's starting to just uh, go on just, just to make sure they're telling the truth. Well, so we suggesting that we might have seen one or two names in the 30 under 30 that might need a category that's more like the 60 under 60. Yeah, that was it. A few, a few of them are going, no, nah, they're not 30. Um, but anyway, during that process, she came across. She okay. came across. Come on, who's come across? 786 Electrical. 786 Electrical. That yes. just rolls off the tongue. Yeah, I think it looks remarkably like this gentleman here. Yes, is that he right? Is. And he's, uh, he's based in the Leicester area. And they, they do claim they're super fans. Okay, so, so we'll have to prove that when we'll see you in the comments. Okay, super fans. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah, he's a super fan of Efix. We like that. So she, she called him up. He knew she he, he knew who we were. Yeah, he did. Okay. Yeah, yeah, was, was he nominated himself within the category then? He's, he's, uh, he's not under 30. No, he isn't. That, Gary? Uh, let's yeah. have another quick look. Yeah, he might have had a hard paper round. It might have been, um, I don't know, uphill yeah. for the entire time. So yeah. he might be 24. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, so 786 Electrical, we had a little dig around, obviously, once we're, once we're last we did. Who are these people? So okay. we had a little dig around the website. Okay, and we've got a photograph that reminds me of something that I used to do maybe when I was going on a long trip. I'd mm -hmm. open up a book, and in that book, it'd have two similar pictures, mm -hmm. and then one side and the other side. You had to spot what was different, and there was like four, six, ten different things. Oh, and I think yeah. we could almost apply this to this photograph here. Very similar on the left as the right. Yeah. But just take a moment to have a look at that photograph and, and think, which of the two vans would you like to be driving? So I think quick, we need to go a little bit closer, Gary. A little bit closer. Just so let's, so let's people can focus just, in. Just bring that one back out. So let's go in, and we're going to have a closer look again. So there's not a lot of difference between those two photographs. I know what you said straight away, the eight has moved, hasn't it? So the eight isn't in the same position. You've already put a ring around that one. There's only one wheelie bin. You've put a ring around that. The ladder's the dividing point. What's, what was the one thing that we noticed most about that picture, Gordon? Well, one of the vans, it seems to have a little bit more material on the front dashboard than the other one. Oh yeah, I wouldn't have spied that without you telling me. Yeah, it looks like there's one or two uh, trips to Perhaps a local cuisine that does take away on that yeah. uh, dashboard. It's a busy yeah. dashboard, isn't it? Yeah, but it was, uh, yeah, so it's great. I mean, I, I tell you what, I had a look at the website. A great website, actually, for electricians. And I, I've dived into a lot of uh, websites over the years. Yeah. Loads of useful information on there. Loads of good stuff to get SEO, to get people to the website. Um, so, yeah, he's done a few videos on YouTube as well. Oh, obviously another one of them, is he? No, 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 oh, with yeah. a difference, actually. So they're geared towards how to help the customer. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, so he has some... Um, so Adam has expressed an interest in bringing a few members of the team up here, Gary, oh, to have a go at uh, the Electrician's uh, Challenge. So that means we might have two or three people competitive. Can you imagine the juices flowing in the room? Yeah. They're we'll, all electricians. They so come we'll get stuck that. in that so, team. Yeah. So if Adam, yeah, if you want to come up and see us, uh, we'll do that. And we'll also help you how to make a few videos for your customers uh, that are probably just as bad as ours. Oh, right. Actually. We can pass so, on all our bad tips. Yeah, we can so, pass like, all, uh, on our bad tips. So having the wrong screen on on the live stream, not having a sound and the internet falling off, we can show them all those. We Fingers crossed for the internet this evening. We haven't quite solved our internet problem yet, but we're on we're it. There. We reckon we're there. this month, don't we, we'll have solid internet. Development, I thought. Right, so you've stumbled through and now you've got to do the register. Right, so now I can do the register. Who's in from the top? We've got, as ever, 
like it's almost like pr burned into the screen. <laughs> we have uh, Richard Brook, obviously also known as Sockets, and we have got the splates out there. Richard, we have seen you've been pushing a new product. We haven't sent us one yet, so we can't have a look at that. We can't do anything with it. Uh, we've got A-Spark 1, always on. Yeah. Uh, Big Ash, yeah. he's been busy this week, Ash. I don't think he's been to college. He's been doing <laughs> a lot of CPDs. Yes, he has. Uh, Sean Dempsey, as ever. Billy Torrey is back. He'll be obviously keenly tuned in for the Electrician's Challenge or this week's lottery numbers. Uh, Solidus 784. Uh, da, 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 Carl Robson, early years, Linda's fun, aka Mrs. Hayes. She's in, good, nice to see you. Uh, Mark Allenson. Okay, ever. yeah, Mr. Apprentice, one to one. Yep, James Kane, I will answer your email later this week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so they're not telling you what's going on. Uh, uh, Sean Grain, uh, Threefold Electrical, good evening from all, from Lloyd, Denise, and Jeff. Is that a new one? Yeah, no, oh. they're, they're no, they on for, I recognise Threefold Electrical. Gary B, Sparky 400T, Harry G, 990. Richard Gaunt. Oh, oh, I've seen Richard already this yes, week. He was hanging a, around our favourite curry house. He was. In yeah, he was. He had, a, he had a point in our favourite pub as well. Yeah, following going us around on there. town there, so we'll see. Uh, Tom Bickerton down on the ferry. Yes. Uh, Air Spark one done that. Glyn Owen, who has all been across. Yes, we've uh, met Glyn. Yeah. Yep. He says he brought the law this afternoon. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. Oh, there we go. I got it. Uh, Adam, uh, Paul Tipton, Mr. Hudson, yes. jolly fine quality. Oh. Still hasn't arranged that studio tour for us yet. Oh, right. Uh, the UK Spark, Jamie Dibbs, Adam from 786. That's what we like to see. JRC Electrical, wow. C47 from Ireland, the tool guy, Dave Noble, Thomas Fountain, and Anthony Salt, the tool guy, JRC Electrical. Joe Frailing. Okay. Wow, there's a lot on tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Could be the topic tonight. Yeah. It? Well, how many people are on? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, good. So thank you for joining us, and we're going to try our best to stumble through this. We can. We're slightly different. We're not made a radical change. That the Apprentice Wall or the Electrician Challenge is all the same. We're going to do a spot and move away. We've got the news at Penn this evening. So if you, it's one of your favourites of the three that we do now, we've got the news at Penn, Regulation Corner, and Pointless View. Mm. And we're going to do Pointless View probably four times a year. So that becomes a special, special one. So it's news at Penn this evening, but mm. we always like to start, don't we, with Gary's Swap Shop so we can obviously get the comments going and all the rest of it. So let's bring my little logo in. Gary's Swap Shop, if you're the first time viewer and you're watching it live, you can play along. If you're watching it on catch up or you're watching it in the future, people still put it in, but obviously they won't be playing along. I think they do it out of tongue in cheek. So in order to do Gary's Swap Shop, you have to first of all listen to what I need you to do first. If you win, we pick two people out at the end. And if you're picked out at the end, okay, you need to send me something first. That was the swap shop rules. And I swap it over for something slightly better, hopefully. If you want to play along, I want um, Caterpillar in. So let's have a listen to it. Today's keyword for Gary's swap shop is Caterpillar. Okay. So in order to play along, Joe's just told us there that you need to put the word Caterpillar into the comments. And still, you don't know what you're sending yet. So all those people have already put it in. I need a Tesla Model 3. Yeah, okay. So all I need you to send me, if you're chosen at the end, two people will. You need to send me a M4 screw. It's the one that uh, holds normally things like conduit box lids on. So M4 screw or bolt. I don't mind what it is. But what are you going to win? So let's see if we can tempt them. Do you want to do hand cam for me, young man, oh, rather than sitting oh, there just uh, holding oh. your notepad? So I'll bring in hand cam. It's uh, no, like in, in now. You, oh, I didn't bring it. So inside of our bag, we've got a uh, nice flask from our good friends at oh. EV Blocks. Mm. Trevor sent us a, a bunch of these to give away, and they are top quality flasks. And in this weather, be very helpful. Back out with the old Eddie Current hat. So that's a nice one. Possibly the best tool we re never reviewed last year, or best torch we never reviewed, mm. a BG Laseco head torch, and we think they're outstanding. We've all got one, haven't we? We have. I okay. use it every day. And then, especially in this time first year. time ever, hot off the press, we've got a couple of stickers, but these are not just any kind of stickers. We're going to give away the Talk the Talk sticker. So you saw the logo in our last live stream, and we've been working on that frantically in the background, mm. but they're also available. That's pretty nice, isn't it? So in order yeah. to win that, you just need to be pulled out at the end. You need to put the word caterpillar in. Oh, they're pouring in, yeah. Okay, so if you, put, if you put caterpillar in, you're in with a chance. But only if we pull you out at the end and two people. You've got to be on the show at the end. That's what we like about it is we've had it before. We've pulled people's names out. We're not even sure they're still on that stage. And then sometimes they don't send us something in. You think, well, you never got to the end of the show. So yeah. there will be another prize on the way through. We'll be giving one away. Gordon will be doing his GT later on, the Gordon time. So we'll be doing the race wall. And that's with uh, Ian from La Seco, isn't it? Yes, so we've got is, him yeah, coming. And, <laughs> and anyone who saw a little snippet of that, we left it on 
Instagram today. Obviously, our good friend Nick Ramo takes a paste in during the commentary on that one as well. Yeah. Okay, so that's us caught up with, <laughs> the with that. Ramo. Yeah, so we're going to do an extended news now. Now, you've got something to get off your chest. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, it's not that shirt, because I've seen a bit of nipple action <laughs> earlier on. It's a bit cold in here. Okay, so what have we got to do then? Uh, well, yeah, so obviously the, the title we put on the thumbnail tonight was about can you pull the main fuse legally, or will you be allowed to? Because obviously, at the moment, you can't. So when we say main fuse, we're talking yeah. about that cut-out fuse by the meter that's owned by not us. Yes, that's owned by okay. the DNO. Okay, yeah. and you suggesting then that maybe, even on social media, it's become quite a habit, actually, to yank that one out? Yeah, I mean, there's a, we, we see loads of it, uh, okay. and uh, yeah, sometimes it'll turn up on site and you'll find it's already been cut, or uh, who's the guy who cuts them all, is it? Uh, uh, Pablo. Pa Pablo, is it? Pablo? Pablo. Someone, Pablo. Pablo's pa done. So let's see what the problem is. I'll just bring a little video clip in for you, Gordon. We can talk at the same time. So we're going to that meter cupboard, okay, and we've, we're needing to work on the installation, ignore the switch that we've got. We've cut the seals off and we've yanked out the fuse, maybe on full load, okay? The issue being then is children or people with small fingers can go in and just touch those live parts. Mm. I think the definition of an electrical enclosure is one that requires a key or tool in order that you can enter it. So by removing those seals, you've actually left behind something. Imagine a small child was playing while you were working. They're very excited about all your tools and all the rest of it. Maybe that metering area is in the front of a terraced house, you know, down where normally the TV sits. And you've taken off all those seals. And I'm sure, you know, you wouldn't want it ever to happen. Maybe the child, when you've left, has seen what you've been up to, maybe wiggles out that fuse and just accidentally sticks their hand in. That would be the equivalent to me of leaving maybe a socket outlet off the wall. Don't put the 3.5 box screws in. Just push it back because you've only got to pull it forward to touch the live parts. Yeah, and some of them aren't in cupboards. Uh, and obviously, no. it's, a, it's a contentious issue. And obviously, the DNOs don't want people messing with that because obviously, no. if you undo screws uh, on there or the meter, uh, that they, they have a liability as well if it's not done uh, back up. Okay, that probably links into a bit of the, the talk thing we've been looking at. So when we're reconnecting maybe new conductors to the meter, which is not ours, or we're in at that uh, cutout area, and that cutout could be quite old, couldn't it, Gordon? Yeah, I mean, it comes, uh, some of them are hundreds of years old. And you can find one of the old biscuit tin ones that are metal. The DNO will come out and replace it straight away if you find one. So, um, so what you're saying is as you're moving that fuse around, you might be using maybe breaking that paper insulated conductor underneath it. Maybe as you're, you've gone into the meter, you've disturbed something in there, and that's because there's an issue. Yeah. But, but it seems that lots of people do cut that seal. Well, because at the moment, the system is an absolute mess. It is. Actually, and especially because there's many, because it's not actually the DNO who's responsible for doing If you want a disconnection or an isolator fitted, right. it's not the DNO, ah, it's so, the so energy supplier. So I wouldn't ring Western Power in my area. No. I'd have to ring, I think, Eon for me. Yeah. Okay. So imagine if you're doing, say, a job on some, uh, say, local authority houses, 10 rewires in a row oh. to get the disconnection, you could have to contact up to 10 different suppliers. Hang on, not now you went, you've probably got three. <laughs> you've probably got three, you were the old supplier. Um, yeah, let's go to the wall. So yeah, that's, that's a problem. So maybe, you, maybe they're, they're, they're small flats or whatever, so it's a rewire in a day. We've all done that before, haven't we? So that means I might have to contact 10 different. Yeah, half the suppliers, suppliers won't speak to you because you're not the customer. No. You're just, you're just Gary Hayes. I am. Yeah, and, and it becomes a problem. Then you go to the websites for these. Okay. These organizations are trying to find out the procedure. They're all different. Okay. Yeah, now. So there's a procedure, is there? Hmm? Is there going to be a new procedure? Well, there is. Well, let's just bring a slide in, guys. Oh, so let's, let's bring slide number at, one in. Uh, let's slide number one. So this is uh, so this is my supply at the minute. Bulb. Uh, sorry, you've got bulb don't work anymore, do they? <laughs> well, they've started answering emails again. Um, so if you went to them, yeah, they'd charge you 120 pounds or 60 pounds if you um, if you have a smart meter fitted. Okay, hang on. So, so that reminds me of another story that does. Yeah. So have you got a smart meter? I've got a, well, technically, yes. Well, actually, tell the truth. Technically, well, I put the smart meter in, but it doesn't work. Okay, so you haven't got a smart meter. Yeah. Uh, have you got economy seven? Uh, we're not going there, that. We'll, oh, we'll come no, back no, to no, that. No, 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 no. Well, let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's get a little, little teaser in for this story. <laughs> yeah. Have you got economy seven, Gordon? I used to have economy seven. Right, so you haven't got a smart meter, and you yeah. haven't got economy seven. Have yeah. you got an electric car? Yes. Okay. <laughs> no cheap rate for charging that, then, is there? No. And it's different been, story it's coming up in a different week. And it's been going on from, um, yeah. Okay, anyway. back to the cutouts. Yeah, so the cutouts, um, obviously each energy supply is differently. Craig Gifford's in, he is on, secret millionaire. He's right, there's one DNO has a procedure in place where you can register an electrician, get some temporary seals okay. and do that. And yep. Yeah, that'd be great if it was rolled out everywhere. So I like that one. So what we're saying there is, and again, 
I'm not telling anyone how to do their job, and I'm sure someone's already said, me working live is unacceptable. It is, I totally agree with that. And there is a procedure to isolate the main cutout fuse, but you're probably deciding it's too inconvenient for you. I've been there, I've had that T-shirt. But imagine you've cut the seals and you've pulled it out. Just put, just put a piece of wire around and a yellow crimp, anything to prevent that child from pulling it back out. It's still better than nothing, but we're not talking about that as being an acceptable procedure, are we? No. We're gonna have to follow one. Now you said one of them's got the temporary seals in place. Yeah. But what are the rest all talking about? Uh, but the rest, um, well, hold on, before we finish my story. No, yeah. you're going there, aren't yeah. you? Because obviously that was bull, but they were one example of where it gets wrong. And there's a lot of energy suppliers out there. There is. Yeah. <laughs> you know where the smart meter go. I, I, I put it off for years and years and years, and they kept writing to me, and I love it, because they went, if you do not have a smart meter, we will take your electricity away. And you mm -hmm. know, that's like, you know, well, you won't be taking my electricity away, will you? Because yeah. you can't. So right. you've got a smart meter? eventually gave in and got a smart meter. I wasn't there when it was fitted, right. which was a shame. So, I tell you what, Gary, yeah? it's time for the second time tonight to play Spot the Difference. <laughs> yeah. Let's have a look here. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I think, if I'm not wrong, on the left, there yeah. is you pointing to your isolation switch. Yeah, and in yeah. a video that I produced, in yes. With your meter there, yeah. generous amount of tails there. Lovely, yes. Yeah. On the right is Gary's meter box after they changed and put the smart meter in. Yeah. He centralised the meter, I thought was very nice. He tried to get it absolutely in the middle. Yeah. There is something missing in there. Yeah, okay, we know what that is. Yeah, and the story's a little bit worse than that because obviously I wasn't there, which was fine. And, and you know, I, yeah, this was a nice story for my children because they got to live through this moment. The, I'd left a hat on the banister and on that hat I used to, you know they have them silver stickers on? Yeah. To take the mickey, I put a GSH electrical sticker on it. So yeah. just take the mickey out in front of the kids. And the bloke walked in and he saw the sticker on the hat and he, and he turned to my wife and went, your husband isn't Gary from GSH Electrical, is it? And she, he turned around and said, yes, it is. And he said some really nice stuff. Mm. Then what he did, he took my uh, 100 amp fuse out and yep. replaced it with 20 amps less. Right. He took my uh, 100 amp double pole switch and took it home with him. He shortened my long tails and probably kept the copper. Mm -hmm. He took the tails out from the top of the cutout and probably kept those and put some long ones and centralized the meter. So when he left, okay, I had 20 less amps and no isolator. So that was yeah. an improvement. And well, the resistance had gone down as well because he oh, took, yeah. it, took a, yeah. like a meter's worth of copper out of it. He did. I was, I, and, and then he also, because he put the, the gas smart meter was fitted, he took the bonding clamp that was in my meter box. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there's a debate there whether it's closest point of entry to the building for looking BS7671, but it was in there, nicely protected by the enclosure to a certain degree. He took it, put it on the outside pipe, which was fully tarnished, didn't put a crimp lug on it, just slapped it on there. Yeah. So everybody can see a terrible bonding clamp so now. Let's just go back to spot the difference. Yeah. So this is your meter box. Now, you had an isolator switch. I did. You went to a smart meter and they removed it. Yes. Yeah. yeah now, I found, now, which supplier are you with? I'm with, I think I'm with um, Romami or I'm with You're you. with Eon. I am. Oh, yeah. yeah, I didn't say that earlier because I couldn't remember it. I'm with Eon. Yeah. Definitely. I've only ever been with Eon. I'm yeah. one of them people they love. Well, let's just have a look at the slide years. from Eon's okay. website now. So what's Eon going to say to me then? So Eon no longer do same day service on the removing the fuse and putting it back in. You've got two options. They'll okay. either come out to you yeah. and fit an isolator. Brilliant. Price and application. Fantastic. Or they'll come out one day, remove the fuse and then come back another day. They don't specify necessarily the day after. Wow. And put the fuse back in. So I'll be potentially left without electricity for a 24 hour period or longer. Or pay some money to have the isolator switch put back in that they took out for free. But there would be a debate when because I've got video evidence of me by my uh, front. I've got several videos with and without the isolator, yeah. so I don't think they can argue that they took it away. Mm. But yeah, but that's the, but that's the mess it is, isn't it? You've either got to pay a lot of money to get a switch put in. Yeah. You've got to find the person to do it. They might not speak to you. You may, they may just come and take it out anywhere. Yeah, it's a total mess. Yes. Yeah. Now NAPA have been doing a lot of work on this with electrical safety first. They now have. I did find there is a special group that looks after. All of the... Well, I never got invited to this group. No, you didn't. You didn't. It's the, it's the UK. Go on in. You ready this? It's gone in. Give us it. It's the DC yep. USA. D uh, right, so it's American. It's nothing to do with America. Okay. It's the Distribution Connection Use of Systems Agreement. Oh, if you'd have asked me, I'd have probably got that one. You probably would have. And, so, they, and they look at... Um, yeah, they look at the whole system. And there's a proposal in there that comes in the 9390. You can Google this and you can get into all the minutes and all the nasty things that go on behind the scenes of these things. You can see the survey that NAPIT did with uh, uh, 600 members to give right. them the information. Conclusion? Uh, conclusion. So they're trying now to put in 
a defined procedure Brilliant. so the customer can get an effective disconnection within an agreed time, yeah. an agreed cost, and an agreed process that's standardised across all energy suppliers. Ah, right. So that's that's where the issue is. We've got to align all the energy suppliers to, to obviously apply the agreement yeah. they come up with. Yeah, and then hopefully then it'll be monitored. Uh, they'll have obviously time limits. They'll see, they'll have to feed back how well they perform against that standard. Yeah. Now, hopefully that should, it's not what people want. Obviously people want the right to be able to just go and take the fuse out and put a seal back on. Yeah. Uh, obviously, if you're uh, competent and have been trained to do that, um, yeah. but it's a it's a little improvement. Should we say. At least it's a standardised. You know, at least you'll know what the hoops and loops are. My issue's never been, and people. Are, are, this is one of my. I used to work for Western Power, which is uh, previously known as Eastman's Electricity when I was there. My my issue not not necessarily is that the electricians are pulling that fuse because they need to work on the system, even if there is something in place. My issue is not having it effectively sealed back up in some way that means that somebody with no skill can come along and remove that fuse. Now we could argue the one that we looked at was in a box that required a key. I've heard all that before, but what we're saying was it was sealed against entry beforehand and held in place. We wouldn't leave a socket outlet without those two front screws mm. off. So let's try and let's, let's let's try and make sure that somebody can't just pull that out after mm. we've left and broke but those it's, But the challenge is obviously you're always up against Someone will go through the correct procedure, yeah. and somewhere, it's somewhere in the chain where the customer's paying the someone and there's the 120 quid. Yeah. yeah. If someone misses that stage out, they're They'll already 120 pounds better, better yeah. off on the, on the price. And so hopefully, once the system has been cleaned up and defined and yeah. straightened out, then we'll hopefully see that either people stick to it or some, cause, you know, you've never seen anyone out there saying, oh, well, we got, uh, you know, We've been fined for it, or yeah, yeah, everyone says, Oh, it's illegal, but you can never find any examples of anyone, yeah, really getting it unless someone's obviously grown plants in the loft <laughs> <laughs> and they've probably used some line taps, probably. so they didn't probably. know about those line taps <laughs> until very recently. <laughs> yeah, I think that's who's the guy um, uh, on this guy always puts it on uh, Instagram, yeah, about that. So, again, I now know what people are thinking, right? Okay, so I'm going to leave the seals on the, the cutout fuse if I break the seal on the meter and then disconnect the conductors from there. At least when I put it back in, there's a screw, and yeah. you need a key or tool in order to open that part of it. Unfortunately, that means you'll be working live on the right-hand side of the meter. Yeah. Okay, so we don't recommend that one either. Yeah. So hopefully, we'll see that develop over time, and you'll come back maybe when we get Yeah, I'll see, it looks like it's, it's out, for, um, out for approval at the minute, and there's another one going through at the minute. It's not three nights, there's another one. Uh, that I will allow any energy company to pull the fuse because at the minute, <laughs> if you're right. with Eon, yes. they can't go to a bulb account and pull the fuse at a bulb one. Oh right. Because the agreement doesn't let them do that either. Okay. So is bulb still working? We're not going there this week, Harry. I've got another treat for you, actually. Oh, that right, I didn't treat. tell you about earlier in the week. Uh, oh, treats! Is it a physical treat or an oral one? Uh, well, obviously, everyone likes to have a chuckle at those with electric cars when oh, do when there's a challenge. Well, and obviously that big power cut behind we had before Christmas in the Northern Power Grid area caused me a lot of problems. Yeah, and I'd just like to say that you were immensely smug when I couldn't get any diesel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. So, the other day, you know, you, I, I was walking, I was, you thought I was out walking the dogs. You often ring me when yeah. you're walking the dogs. You've got time, can't you? You think, I'll oh, just unload with gas. Yeah. It sounded like you were walking with your dogs. Where were you then? Uh, I was walking through town. Which town? Skipton. Wow, we don't even walk through town, we work here. No, but I parked my, I thought on that day, I parked my car across the other side of town. Right. Yeah. Why would you do that? Because uh, I'd run out of no. battery. You've run out of, <laughs> where were you trying to get to work? Hmm? You getting to work to charge? Yeah. Well, no. Hang on, no, 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 no. <laughs> Talk me through those sweating last moments. Where, no. where, at what point did you realise you weren't going to get there? What, did you turn no. off in the car? No, I started a long time before that. Yeah. So where were so you coming from? Home. home. Yeah. So what made you get in the car with no electricity? Well, because I went home the night before and forgot to plug it in. Ah. Oh, yeah. Or oh, it would have been on that dear electricity as well. See what you did it. So you're trying to get to work to use the, the <laughs> free stuff we gave you. I just yeah. forgot to plug it in. Yeah. yeah. Overnight, it went really cold that night. Yes. Yeah. What happens to the battery capacity? Well, they, well, if they're anything like my mobile phone when I leave it in there, it loses a lot of its electricity. Yeah. So I got up, had a look in the app. I've got 18 miles. Okay. Yeah. And how far's work from your house? 15. Ah. Yeah. You're well in. Well in. I thought, I'm all right, I can do this, yeah? But it was cold. So obviously right. cold affects battery capacity. I went out of the back of the car. Yeah. Yeah, the doors were frozen shut. Right. Yeah. It's got electric doors, isn't it? So you, so... So I couldn't get in the doors. Right. Apart from the boot. No, you got to climb through the boot. So I went through the boot. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I went through... Oh, what a clown! 
I went through the booth. Yeah, yeah. lovely. I had to drop Amelia off at the school bus. Did that. She was part of the journey. Yeah, she was part oh. of the journey. So I did that. Dropped her off at the bus. Yeah. And I thought, all right, I can do this. I've got 18 miles, it's 15 of there, and I'm driving along. Normally, you switch the stuff off you don't need, yeah, air yeah. conditioning, radio, yeah. anything, you know, kept the headlights on. Um, Did but you as drive? I'm driving, that range is dropping further. As I'm coming into Skipster, it said, you need to stop and charge this car now. Wow. Yeah, it's down to zero. I've never, ever driven on zero before. Well, I've got to say that my diesel car, I can probably do another 50 miles comfortably when it says zero. So you're at zero now. Yeah, yeah I'm at zero. Yards so did I thought you get? I'm not going to get across the unit. And the last thing I want to do is stall on the way into here because oh. the industrial estate, all the trucks will be coming in. Oh, Everyone will be going berserk. Oh, yeah, I can see it now. Shame. So I swerved into the car park next to Busy Lizzie's where there's the Supercharger. There is. Yeah. You got to there, did you? I got to there. Oh, that must have been like that feeling. You, you know the feeling. So let's put it to people that don't own a battery car. You know the feeling when you need the toilet and you start sweating a little bit. And the closer you get, and when you get to the colder area, almost it just jettisons out, doesn't it? So you, you're relieved. You got there. Yeah. I got so the there. relief. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. I got there. Yeah. Right. Please tell me it was broken. No. I keep the charging lead no. in the front at the front of the car. Oh, right, okay, that's yeah. right. Oh, no, so it was frozen. It was frozen shut. I could ping, but I couldn't get, I could see the lead, but I couldn't get to it. Yeah? Yeah. But then I thought, it's all right, it's down at the unit SeaTech because we're doing a series of centers of charging lead. Right, so you're going to yeah. walk down here to charging lead. So I walked down here to get the charging lead. Surely over the period of the day, though, it would defrost and you'd be able to go back and just lift the lid anyhow? Well, I could have done. Of course, but I just, I just want to get it here. Oh, okay, got done. here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Please tell me that was somewhere else. What happens to our lock on the front gate when it's cold? Oh, it was that day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it freezes up. So yeah. you need to get your de-icer that you haven't got. Yeah. Which the builder wasn't car. in next door. Okay. Yeah, so you so got... I couldn't use his kettle. Um, we'd, <laughs> we'd, luckily, I put the recycling out the day before. Yeah. Oh, so, so I wheeled the bin up to the gates. It's got the spikes on the back. I climbed oh. on the top of the bin, over the spikes on the top of the gate, came in the unit, boiled the kettle. Right. Yeah. Defrosted the lock, took it out there, and you were just ringing as I was walking back into town. So you were walking back with a lead? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. So I had the lead. You were right. I had the lead, just not, not the one with the dogs on. Ah. So. What a shame for the. So when it goes hours. wrong. Yeah. It goes wrong, spectacularly wrong. But so. again, you think, as, yeah, let's, let's, yeah, it's a great story. And you've got some brilliant traveling stories. If you ever get a chance to come down to Lionside Studios, there is a couple of traveling stories that I've heard many times at Gordonstone that are just absolutely hilarious. Um, but that could be a problem, couldn't it? You know, you're, you know, you see why people get nervous. I'm driving to a location. Maybe that's a, a, I don't know, something of importance. Maybe it's a fun fair or something like that. You, you got want to take the family, and you have got a long round trip. You can see how people get worried because you think I can get there, yeah, but I can't get back out. You get there, there's four EV chargers and they're all gone. Oh. You're stuck with the amount of miles to try and get some electricity back in your car. Yeah. yeah. All those people that were short on diesel, yeah, all those weeks ago, that was for you. Yeah, he ran out. I was close a few times. I was uh, sweating it. It was, uh, yeah, that, I mean, that was, I've never driven on zero before. And it's like, uh, yeah, and I don't know what happens, actually, does it just sort of... Well, I don't know. Yeah. We could have found out if you'd have kept going. <laughs> <laughs> and was it just, just in and you thought, oh, that's it, if I turn the radio on, that'll just talk. You've not tried to plug your mobile phone in, perhaps it'll draw the energy out of your phone and put it back into the car. <laughs> well, yeah, phone, was, phone uh, to car. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. But, okay, uh, so well, two great things there. So yeah. one humorous story and one to sort of suggest they're trying to solve the uh, ceiling of the cutout fuses yeah. for us in the future, which is really nice. But we will it. revisit the smart meter incident. Uh, and if you, it's gone to the ombudsman now, so I don't want to prejudice, um, no, pre prejudice them. Okay, that's really good. I think, you know, I think it's above us, mm. and I think it's time for time for it to come down. But I need to call it. I think I need to call it. Have I got the right one on the list? Have a look at the list. You, yeah. You do, yeah, I have. I you know, yeah. so you you look less natural there than me. I'm you just like, you're bring like that down. I'm trying to read the yeah, list. Down. No gonna, one's going to notice. We're going to move. Yeah, I get. <laughs> yeah. That's right. This is what we're doing next. So right. Wait a second. Yep. Oh, I haven't done this for a while. Can we see it? Oh, I don't know. Doo. No, didn't work, did it? No. Doo. Doo. Oh, we've got a new power tool. Fantastic. You might want to send that up a little bit for me. There we go. Oh, so we're gonna have a sneaky peek. Some bits that have been sent in from Cat. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Now, I didn't know this. So we often get a lot of people will send us, can we send you something to have a look at? And, yeah. And my, my thinking on this is normally, have we got one of them? Yeah. First. 
and is it going to be statistically any good? Yep. Yeah. But then when someone says cat, I think, well, that's a Caterpillar, Dumpers, you yep. know, one of the world's biggest manufacturers of uh, construction equipment. If they're going to lend their brand out or someone to put some power tools, you've got to think it might be pretty good. So we're going to have a look at that in a little while. Have they got a kettle? They haven't done a kettle or a coffee machine. What about a heated vest? <laughs> or heated vest. So they've gone for sensible things like drills and say... They've gone for drills yeah. and things like that. Yeah, saws and stuff, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to take a look at that, but in order for, as Gordon's just read on the board, us to transition to another area, we need what we call a, a segue. So we're going to play this week's News at Penn, which as always is absolutely classic. <laughs> USB charging accessories finally available after long wait. Former Zigbee Alliance asks, does compatibility matter? eFix launch new training package to help you with CPD. Electrical contracting news announce exciting development in the south of England. And in sporting news, two major transfers are made for major players in the electrical industry. This is the eFix News at Penn. Good evening. Almost 18 months ago, eFix produced a video on Euromodule USB charging points from Hamilton Lightstat, showcasing the extraordinary quick charge option available. Due to issues that have impacted on nearly every part of the electrical industry, these have been very difficult to get hold of. However, Hamilton have now announced that the accessories are once again available, meaning that quick charging is once again a viable option. Mentioning those things can negatively impact on your YouTube channel, so let's just call them Blovid and Craigsit. Our second story relates to the latest initiative in moving towards an integrated and compatible world of smart devices. Many big players in the smart industry develop smart home systems that operate on their own protocols, leading to situations where you have to commit to one system and stick with it. However, the Connectivity Standards Alliance, or as you may know them, the Zigbee Alliance, as they used to be called, have announced that a new platform called Matter or as you may know it, Zigbee, as it used to be called, is being developed by leading proponents of the smart industry as a way of integrating a number of different smart platforms to allow them to communicate and work together, leading to a more streamlined and reliable installation, commissioning and operating process. We're going to be watching this development closely as here at eFix, we're a mixture of skeptics and fanatics of smart technology. Perhaps the ultimate test will be to hand it over to our tame app specialist, sorry, skeptic, and see if they can get it working. We'll leave it up to you to decide which one of us that is. In an ongoing effort to help and support hardworking electricians, the selfless editors at eFix have released yet another free training package to help you with your CPD and brush up on areas of knowledge that may be a little bit hazy. Working in association with Invra Renewable Technologies, they've created a free certified learning experience to help you delve a little deeper into the requirements for EV charge point installation in BS7671. Another one of those great moments where I learned a ton of stuff while trying to teach others. It's probably a lesson in that somewhere. For our next story, we realised that the deadline for this segment was looming, and so we turned to the pages of Electrical Contracting News to see if we could borrow any hot stories from there. With zero context, this first headline caught our attention. New electrical equipment installed in Guildford. So like a socket or a switch or something. UK Power Networks have invested £7.3 million in a new purpose-built electrical switch house, consisting of 21 new switchgear panels as part of a plan to upgrade and future-proof the electrical network in the Guildford area. Another exciting development in the south of England is the opening of a brand new branch in Lewisham of the increasingly popular Yes Electrical Wholesalers. In addition, this branch will provide electricians in the area with services from the four main specialist areas that Yes deal with. Am I pronouncing that right? These being lighting, security, EV and energy and industrial. But if you don't live in the London area, yes, Electrical have over 95 branches nationwide waiting to take your order. It seems it's been a slow news day for the electrical industry in the south of England so far in 2022. 
And finally, in sporting news, we've seen a couple of major transfers in the industry to start off the new year. The first of these being Mark Evans, who, having carved out a name for himself in containment as a striker for La Grande FC in his position as marketing director for over 13 years, is now moving into the same role at noted rivals at Core City for cable management and protection. We're looking forward to the reaction on trunking Derby Day when these two teams go head to head. Away from manufacturing, we've seen another major transfer as noted industry defender Darren Staniforth, formerly of the NIC EIC United, has now transferred from his surprise signing to click Skullmore County and is now taking up a midfield position as head of technical solutions at CEF Rovers. We're sure he'll be bringing his intelligent style of play to bear with good effect at his new team and we wish both our big name signings all the best for the future as they set off into their new golf clubs. Sorry, just clubs. My apologies. I've told you not to mess with the auto cue, Gregory. I know you think it's funny. It's really not. I've been Joe Robinson, and this has been the News at Penn. Good night. Whoa. Oh, I do like a bit of transfer news. I'm into the old fantasy football. I've joined my son's fantasy football league. I'm currently bottom. So that's, yeah, <laughs> great, isn't it? But, uh, so transfer news. So I, I think I looked at Darren Stanley LinkedIn profile. I think the last one he did was virtually he joined Skullmore. So yeah. I think it's a, it's a seasonal thing every year, isn't it? It's on yeah, a Bosman. He's off and goes, one-year contracts everywhere he goes. <laughs> okay, so that's interesting. Thank you very much, Joe. As always, News at Penn, and we'd like to say today it's been very stressful for Joe to get that asset over to us. It's taken the majority of the time, and he uploaded that during his, uh, his evening meal. So thank you very much, and hopefully you enjoyed that as much as we did when we watched it as well. Yeah. So, and Will, also, there is a link to the CPD that Joe mentioned in the uh, description below, yeah. if you haven't already done it. Uh, but the EV, we've got loads of stuff coming out on EV. Sorry if you're not an EV installer. But the CPDs are there that are other ones. And not oh, just yeah. No, no, no. There's, there's yeah. everything in there, uh, but there is a bit of a flow of EV coming up. Yes. Uh, but back to these uh, power tools again. No, oh, first, no. No, I'd like you to do your bit. It's your segment. Ooh. It's your moment in the light. And let me bring your little logo up. GT time. The GT time. So we need that. Yeah. We need people to interact with us again. We are going to have a look at uh, these tools in a while. But before we get onto that, uh, coming up soon, E Moncton from Lasico is going to take <laughs> on uh, the electrician's challenge. Yep. He's a non-electrician, and as ever. If you are the closest to the time he does the challenge in, in minutes and seconds, then we'll spend you uh, a special prize. I think we've got a set of some RJ45 crimper tools from... from uh, good friends from, at Nipex. From Nipex. And I might put one of those special new stickers in there oh, as well. Oh, you promise so, me, So, uh, just remember, Ian is a non-electrician. Uh, and obviously, that tends to mean they're very fast. Yeah. So time's in. So it's the one with the closest time. Yeah, in minutes and seconds. Yeah, okay. you can only put one in. You can't trade up or down as the challenge goes on. Um, and obviously, as, once it's started, we'll also we'll, we'll knock on the head. However, for some people, and people like Big Ash, have obviously seen a little snippet of him um, on Instagram, and they yeah. so they've already made a decision because he was uh, he was moving around quite quickly, and that consumer unit when I looked at it. Yeah, and he does a half rainbow, which we'll learn what oh, that is. A half rainbow. <laughs> we'll have a little bit of times a half are coming rainbow. in, Gary. So we're off on that. So, okay, brilliant. Uh, cat power tools. Yes. Um, so we got uh, we got two to start with. We got a radio because we haven't got a radio. We haven't. No. So we got a radio. So if I bring the old camera in. Uh, Let's, I'm now miles up on the asset. So here we go. So we've got a cat radio. It's DAB, isn't it? DAB. We can't put it on because obviously we'll get crashed out with the yeah. old copyright music. Yeah. It's mains and battery, is it not? Yeah, we've got a, a lot of those adapter plugs in the front. Uh, and there's an aux thing in there. Okay. DAB station things. It's heavy. This yeah. is heavy. Yeah, I thought the battery was in it. It's not. So if you crack no, that. the battery goes in the back. Okay, and it's the same one as the drill? It's the same one as the drill. Okay, it comes it's forward. one fits them all. There you go. Yeah. The battery goes in there. It's got a USB charger in there. Unfortunately, it's still the A, but we'll yeah. get there in the end. Yeah, mm -hmm. nobody's done anything with a C on them yet, but... Uh, that's and it's IP, been. is it 54? Am I yeah, 54. So you could, in theory, put your phone in there to charge it up as well. Ah, right, without uh, the battery in. Yeah. Is that something it says in the instructions, or you work that out for yourself? I'm guessing that so far. Okay, um, that's good. But it is a bulky bit of kit, and you're not going to knock that over accidentally, are you? No. And uh, so I thought that was quite good. Um, so we will test that out over the coming weeks. Um, it's uh, Bluetooth as well, so you can uh, Bluetooth from your phone. Of course, phone. you can get your tunes out there. So you can play the stuff on your phone through here? Yeah. As you've got a torch? 
It uh, hasn't got a torch. Oh, I thought everything had a torch. I thought everything had a torch. So no bit. torch. Yeah, so that's the radio. And the other one we've got, because we didn't have one, is this SDS hammer drill. I'd like to say we didn't have an SDS drill when I did the Delago fi uh, fixings videos where I was drilling the concrete. And I said before we went to it, we got, where's our SDS drill? We haven't got one. So people yeah. commented that I didn't get one. Let's have a look at it and closer look. So it's 18 volts, yeah? yeah. Four ampere hour. We do a five amp as well. It sort of obviously has graphene technology. So we don't know what that is yet, but we'll okay. hopefully explore that. Okay, so so yeah, pretty much. A lot of different modes, yeah. I guess what you'd expect from a drill. It and, is pretty heavy. That's three and, and a half kilos. You're holding it with one hand, didn't you? Let's see how long you can do that for, yeah? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the old, yeah, in front of you, John. Can we have a look in the box? Because that was a little bit of a disappointment. I had a Metabo drill a long time ago with a red in tray that was made of this sort of semi flimsy plastic. And over time, it just disintegrates. Sorry, I've got a bit of glare there on my lights. Mm. So I apologize about that. Yeah, so it's a bit. They've not wasted anything in here, I would suggest. No, like precious but the box resources. Wise, yeah, it's nice. pretty good. Yeah, the box itself, yeah. yeah, yeah. Good firm box. Obviously, all of these, there's impressions as some sort of interlocking system here, isn't there? Oh, but obviously, yeah. it won't fit anybody else's interlocking system no. and you can guarantee the battery won't fit anybody else's battery no well, that's going to cause me a problem in the cabinet where i keep all the chargers okay so what you're saying we've got a row of chargers haven't we we've yeah. got to make up room for another one yeah so now i bolt them down because if we don't bolt them down they'll move around the building and you'll never find the charger ever again so i try to bolt them down in one place okay so we're gonna to have to do um, one it's got that. that it's got some button on the back that says impulse okay which wasn't that didn't that used to be a isn't that a deodorant at some point? Impulse. Yes, it was. I think it still is. Is it? I think is that. Um, I don't want to say it's the one my wife uses because then if I don't, I don't know what. Yeah, I think it is. <laughs> Somebody's wife uses impulse. Yeah. And <laughs> remember Tease. It. I think is that an impulse one? I don't know. Wife, <laughs> leave it in, in the comments. Are we are we impulse in our family? I think my daughter <laughs> might be impulse as well. Yeah. She, she has some lovely smells though. I don't think they're all from. Uh, yeah. That's it. So we've got this in. Uh, it just landed this week. Um, we're gonna. Well, obviously. Start using it, and well, we'll, uh, we'll see how long it takes for us to... Uh... Have you got any of the cat range? You yeah. Know, in the comments, you know, be brutally honest with the truth, if you think they're uh, one way or another. What do you think about the radio? Have you got a radio of a different manufacturer, and it's, you know, the first tool out of the van. It used to be at ours. We used mm. to have a DeWalt one. It was the first thing we brought out. Yeah, well, someone, some people have already said that cat is the rich person's DeWalt. Oh, is it? But we'll see. You know, it's, it's, it's again. Still, by the way, for those who uh, understand it, it's still DeWalt, but you still say DeWalt. De yeah, DeWalt Disney. Oh, yeah, DeWalt. <laughs> it's DeWalt. Okay, so yeah, we're going to have a little play with them as we move on. So have the times all come in? Uh, there's plenty of times coming in. Oh, let's have a look here. Uh, how long does the radio go to 11? Actually. Does it go to 11? I don't think it does. No, it hasn't gone on there, the volume, but it should do. Yeah. Everything should go to 11. DAB. That's what I haven't even got a D So my car has no DAB radio. Yeah. My car has no USB outlet. Mm -hmm. My car has no um, wind mirrors that turn off. Mm -hmm. uh, Joe's just bought one with CME. He says the following words for us, doesn't he? Today's keyword for Gary's swap shop is Caterpillar. This car's got all of that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's first car. There you go. It's taking a mick. Yeah. So, yeah, a lot of interest in that. We will, uh, yeah, we'll see how they get on as we start uh, hammering them. So it's time, isn't it, mm. for the Luden Electrician's Challenge, and we're going to see how quick that Ian Moncton is when he takes on this challenge. So let's go over and see what happened. It's time for another Electrician's Challenge. It's always a treat for us here down at Lineside Studios when we get one of the manufacturers behind the products on the wall at uh, a long to try out to see how they get on. So it's my pleasure to introduce Ian Moncton from La Seco. <laughs> so Ian, we uh, lured you along here under false pretenses to talk about some of the great things we're doing on the 30 under 30. But your job title at La Seco is Contractor Engagement Manager, is that right? It is, yes. So what does that actually mean? So my responsibility is to take the products, training courses and, and services that we offer and to promote them to our contractors. Okay, and we've done a lot with Lasico. If you haven't checked out the CPD modules that are across on your Learning Academy. Yeah, that's it, yeah. That's right, and there's a lot on there. We've got everything from circuit protection through to building regulations and uh, yeah, even we learn things when we, uh, when we produce those modules, so check those out if you haven't seen them. But Obviously, engagement, you deal with a lot of contractors. Yes. What are they saying at the moment? So, at the moment, um, we're seeing a lot of uh, consumer demand um, that's also driving the contractors. Um, so, especially coming out of the pandemic, there's demand for technology around products, 
So uh, things like um, fast charging USBs, uh, people are spending more, more time in their homes and they're willing to spend more money on their home and that consumer demand is, is driving uh, demand to the contractors. Um, we're also seeing as well, um, people are taking a lot more uh, interest in the aesthetics of, of their interiors and their homes and, and the accessories um, that sit within there. And then thirdly, um, we're also seeing a lot more demand for training and support with contractors as well. Yeah, and, and I guess you're reflecting that need. Uh, I mean, we've seen obviously a lot of, a lot of photographs on Instagram, almost everyone's putting in a home bar. We had fantastic <laughs> weather, uh, everyone's outdoor living, and, and obviously, yeah, you've got a lot, yeah. of sock, a lot of products that sit in those categories. Yes. So yeah. it's uh, been happy hunting for the people at La Cico. And probably most people, you know, they hear the words La Cica, but they don't always realise it's BG behind that as well, isn't it? It's one of the other brands. Yeah, so we've got um, three main brands that we go to market, uh, two contractors. So the, the one that we're probably most well known for is BG Electrical. So that's been going for nearly 75 years now, and wow. that's uh, wiring devices and circuit protection. Uh, our youngest brand is La Cico Lighting. So that's a very young but rapidly growing brand. Uh, it's been going nearly eight years now. And that's, uh, that's with LED lighting. And then we've also got the Master Plug Blend as well, which is well known in a market leader in its ca category for portable power. Yeah, and we, we recently actually, we, we took one of those products and put it on TikTok. These three conductors need to be cut back to the required length. Wait, you mean to tell me the bit of card tells you what length to cut them? Did anyone else know this? I didn't which is under the perma plug. That plug is our go-to plug. It's built like a tank, like a lot of the uh, products we get from La Cico. If you haven't seen that video and the stitches that people have done on the back of that, because they didn't realize the instructions were on there, check that out, because that keeps us entertained all the time. But coming to entertainment, Ian, you've obviously <laughs> taken on the electrician's challenge. So let's have a look at how you got on. So here's Ian Moncton taking on the electrician's challenge. So straight in at the socket. Yeah, he's got a frog-like position. So when we back this one off, there we go, there's our frog-like position. And the tongue is protruding from the front of his face, so maybe he's trying to catch a few flies. Well, we'll see if he catches some flies as he's doing this. I see you've cunningly positioned uh, little Nick Ramos' step next to him, Gary. You suggest yeah. we may need that later in the process? Well, we had obviously a few attempts at this, and that step was further away at times. So I, I just kept moving it forward and moving it forward, put the temptation in front of him. He hasn't used it on any of the other runs, but I think he may benefit from it. Yeah, you're right about that frog-like stance. He's Stepped up from the socket to the consumer unit. We normally try to suggest people finish the job you started before moving on to the next one. And uh, no, he's back down again. Uh, oh, he's gone in for the, uh, the, the cables. Semi position now would suggest it wasn't bending down or standing up, was it? That's a new position. My five in one pliers there, one of my top two tools of 2021. It'd be interesting to see what I go for this year. Now he listened. We had obviously a few attempts, non electrician. This bit is vitally important and can kill any great time, can't it, Gordon? Yeah, it certainly can. We've seen the, the, the mighty. Dr. Electric fail at this process as he did it. And he even built a test rig at home, but couldn't get that cable through first time. So here goes Ian, he's listened to your advice, he's done the twist, oh, it's through. As we'd like to say at this stage, Aaron's in trouble, I would yeah. suggest. So, so we're around the Seco Bend, so named after the great firm that he works for, and we're into our consumer unit. If you look yeah. at, uh, Ian's face at times, it does look like he's sucking a Murray Mint. Yeah, Murray Mint, I would have thought I'd have you down as a Werther's original man, Gary. Okay, yeah, so that's uh, showing your age. I'm sure it's more you than me with your teeth. I wouldn't recommend them. Yeah, I don't know what at point you swapped over to Werther's, Gary. I think it is a, an older gentleman's suite, or the one for the, uh, the grandparents. Okay, so three connections in this. Ooh! A half Ramo. <laughs> oh, he has gone indeed for the half Ramo. Will it turn into a full Ramo as we finish the consuming? He took the bait, didn't he? So, uh, yeah, <laughs> yes. in order to get those connections in in this run, he wants it to be his quickest run, and it is. Yeah. So he's gone in for a half Ramo. So. Yeah. Oh, 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 no, he's back off. It was, it was nearly a full Ramo, but he's, already, oh, he's teetering. He's teetering on the edge of if, a full Ramo. If that was a show jumping, you'd say, would that be a refusal? He sort of went for it and then pulled off at the uh, last minute and kept himself at a half Ramo. So, but we're nearly connected in that board, so this is not yeah. bad. So we've yeah. got the socket outlet to go, fly leads going in. Should be on home turf now, because this is a BG La Cico metal clad socket yeah. outlet. He's probably seen it in the catalogue many times, Gary. Yeah, I bet he can find the page on the website, whether he's uh, physically handled one before, who knows? Yeah, well, we'll see what feedback ends up going back to head office. Then it's just this socket is built like a tank. 
Uh, it's uh, yeah, it's had some abuse. And when we say that, let's 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 reiterate that it's been the best one we've had so far because it hasn't fallen apart like the other ones, has it? Yeah, no, and it's, uh, yeah, it is. Uh, it has had yeah, it's had some uh, yeah aggressive attempts at it. So we're a couple of connections away from completing. This might be one of those ones that you describe. It, it might look slow. And it is slow, isn't it? So yeah. probably, yeah, it's yeah. going to be that one, isn't it? Yeah. So, so Scrapman is going to be happy. There's a lot of cables hanging out of the, uh, of the old uh, back box there. So let's see how he's going to get all of them in there. Come on in, you can do it. Just, Ooh, oh, oh, oh. oh, I think I saw a mystery neutral pop its way out there. Yep, yeah, he's back in with that neutral. Oh, got it yeah. Yeah. And we'll see, Ian looks like he's really enjoying himself doing this as the tongue pops out again. I would suggest it's written all over his face, the excitement uh, that he's having while doing the challenge. I think that's, yeah. uh, I think that's a bit of pressure. In. Get yeah. those cables in. Two screws, screws in the right place. Good. That's yeah, good. On top. So two screws away from completing. So uh, if I was sitting at home and my name was Aaron, I'd probably be a little concerned. Yeah. And, uh, got one screw to go. Oh, oh, lost it. Oh, fast recovery though. Oh. Fast recovery. What we normally say is if it hits the floor and you think it's gone right, look left. He was straight on it when he pounced on it from his frog-like position, I would suggest. Yeah, so just one last leap to push that stop button. So Ian, how did you right. find that challenge? Uh, challenging. Yeah, <laughs> and that's just for me. So you're not you're not a, from a trade background. No, you're, not you're, at all. You're a marketing person. Uh, yeah, from a marketing background. Yes, so yeah. office hands. <laughs> office hands. Office hands. And, and let me say, actually, we normally say to people, if if it looks slow, it usually is. Um, however, what you didn't see is where Ian started from. You, you probably one of the. Uh, Slowest initial times, we'll say, <laughs> but actually improvement for, for where you ended up is quite dramatic, yeah, actually. Slowly and, but surely. Yeah, <laughs> you, you, you listened to some of Gary's hints and tips, uh, and we got there in the end. So looking at the leaderboard across there, uh, where, where, where would you like to be? I think my, my benchmark is to beat Aaron. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 No that, expectations. Well, that's, that's yeah. Well, that's it. It could be. Uh, we'll, we'll have a look, Ian. So let's have a. Let's. Uh, Ian Monkson. You know, I am. I am going to be bending down at this point. I worry now. But Ian Monkson, you did this in six minutes and nine, which puts you above EV Nick and certainly above that other marketing person that's done it, David Barnes. So that makes you the fastest marketing person to do the electrician's challenge. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, well, I, we've, we've had little less fun than that ever and we're uh, doing the yeah. commentate. Oh, brilliant. And, and good on for Ian for doing that because he was very nervous to come up and do that. And yeah. I would like to say from where he started from, you get three trials uh, when you come up to try uh, that challenge, well, from where he started to where yeah. he got to. It was the first time we thought we'd have an hour in it. When it was like <laughs> and the first attempt was a long attempt, wasn't it? Yeah. But no, he, he got there and he managed to get himself above Aaron. So that was good. And he got himself well above Aaron. I think he's, yeah, five or six yeah. places above Aaron. He so got well himself game. above. That's it. To get above David Barnes. Now, bear in mind, he works for Nipex yes. in the marketing. Yeah, and he's never held a Nipex tool in yeah. his life unless he's handed it over to somebody who's bought it. He's never yeah. used any of them. So, no, well done to Ian. Great fun. Uh, yeah. We had some, yeah, you can tell, can you? So we've uh, given a little pummy. So we did have a question. So you need well, handicap for The winner first. Oh, so the winner you, on that, the closest the one. Joe's already pinged him. He's oh, on it. The right. adjudicator's already in. Gotcha. Uh, the person closest to it was Sean Grain. Okay. Who I could swear has been close to one before. Right, well, he's won so this one. tip off some somewhere. Okay. Someone, uh, <laughs> so, will he have had a link to do yes, his thing? Yes, it's already gone out, Gary. Right, okay, it's brilliant. Okay. So, so, well done, Sean, on that one. You got the closest there. Gary probably hoodwinked a few people uh, on Instagram <laughs> earlier today, suggesting somehow uh, that it was yeah, Looked faster like than it was. It did. At times it did. Yep. And a lot of people have asked, Gary, yep. what's a half Raymo? Well, you take this. We've got little Raymo down here. So little Raymo is what we named this step. So when Nick Raymo, the great EV Nick from YouTube, came in to see us, he's uh, not very tall. And of course, we had a foot on it. But once we did a lift, so if you just watch my back leg, I've lifted there slightly and I've gone back down. That's officially a half Raymo. Because uh, right, a yep. full Raymo would actually mean that you're going to have to lift in, and then complete the Raymo, yeah. and that's a full Raymo, and then back out again. I can see this being an Olympic sport or something, a bit like the pummel horse, yeah. that we could be uh, the, uh, the gentleman's completed the perfect half Raymo. Yeah. Okay. So, that's so, that's so, yeah. so if you do, uh, obviously a lot of people ask, yeah, if anyone wants to come up and have a go at the electrician challenge, you are more than welcome. We just do ask, yeah, just don't turn up because we might not be here. Um, you just have to, uh, yeah, just, just drop us a line. Uh, we're gonna set a page up actually very soon how to get involved. Um, because a lot of uh, electricians have asked us how do we get on the channel 
Uh, we want to do more things with us. Yes. Uh, and obviously we did some last year. Uh, we want to get out on site more this year. We do. We're definitely going to get to colleges. Yeah. So if you're watching this and you've got an apprentice or uh, you are training at a college, there is a chance that we'll get to you. We're trying to program in, I think, at least 12 between now and pretty much the first week in June. So we're going to be out and we're going to be busy. Yeah, busy. And But yeah, if you want to get involved, if you want, uh, you know, if there's products, you want to even just message them. I mean, we get hundreds of messages uh, yeah. every week. We do try to get back to as many as possible, if they're nice. <laughs> or oh, not, Richard. I've got uh, back to one today and he's fallen completely out with me. Yeah, I had a, yeah. Had a, had a, yeah. Had a chat. Yeah. Sometimes you wake up in the morning and go, oh, that's a bit harsh, that one. But uh, yeah, we'll take it. So yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I but, yeah but if you do want to come along and have a go, uh, more than welcome. Yeah, and again, Logic says the Wednesday we're not live, so we're obviously live tonight. The following Wednesday, we tend to go late, don't we? So yeah. we always go late on a Wednesday. So that's the day. If, if you can get in on a Wednesday afternoon or early evening, then we can have a, you know, maybe have a bite to eat, but definitely we can do the electrician's challenge because you've got to have three attempts. It probably takes nearly three hours, doesn't it? Yeah, about the time of that. And then, yeah, yeah, we had a little natter and we've had a go and then we've had another little natter. So, yeah, so it's, mm. three, it's a three hour process. It's not a quick in and out, you're out in half an hour because you've got to have three attempts. And, and once you've had the third attempt, what's the next thing we normally hear? Oh, I could go quicker. Can I have another go? I left a little bit on the table. Everyone leaves a yeah, bit on the, on the table. table. Even Ross did, and he's top of that leaderboard. So, yeah, so we're going to carry it through. I think at least we discussed it at our uh, start of the year meeting where we're going to change the race hall like they did on. There was another show that had a race that went around a track. Was that? Yeah, and they used to change the car. I can't remember what the, the, the show was. I don't think it was that popular. It was on BBC Two, so of course nobody watched it. Yeah. Um, three guys in that one. Oh, yeah. Old. Yeah, yeah. 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 Something else we've got in common with them, but that's about it. Um, yeah, so they when they changed their car, they changed the leaderboard. But we think we've still got some mileage. We're gonna have a little we're gonna have another leaderboard in it, so I'd imagine Aaron will become bottom of a new leaderboard, so it'll be two. Yeah. And I heard a little whisper that somebody works with Alan uh, Alan? 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 Who's Alan? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but he's, somebody who works with Aaron um, might be popping in. I'll try and yeah, we'll yeah, have to see. Yeah, well, well, that'd be interesting be, uh... to see if Aaron's colleague can get above him. <laughs> yeah, that, that would be fun. But we've already recorded a few weeks ahead. We have. Yeah. We've got the next one we come up. We've got the, our first South African gentleman taking it on. Oh yes, we have. Yeah. Yeah, and he was. A, yeah, he was. Yeah. He yeah. Was, yeah. But just let me come up. There's a lot of movement on the board coming up. Oh, That's right. all we'll say. Oh. I'll yeah. do a Ross then. Oh. Mm. Ah, a so we'll have to see where that ends up. But Ooh, yeah. you've teased the next three shows. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, we can see him from here. You can't. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, but we're, we're terrible for giving misinformation, so don't believe us is what I'm saying. Big Ash said to me on the message on Instagram, he looks quick in that consumer. He, he reckons you speeded it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hadn't. Yeah. But we do edit it. So we try and make all of the races about between um, three to three to four minutes. So about three and a half minutes is perfect. So what you watch effectively is everybody doing it at a similar pace. So you notice that I cut sometimes uh, the action out a little bit if... Uh, there's a massive issue just so it looks a little bit faster. Plus also, if someone says, my daughter took 14 minutes and four seconds, I don't think with the greatest respect anyone would have wanted to watch that, would they? That was a little bit long. That was, so that was a, Yeah, there were some great moments, in there, great moments in there, but it was a long time. So I think you've given away a prize. I think you've also got the two prize winners for Gary's Swap Shop. Remember, if your name's called out in the next section, are you going to ask me to wait again? No, no, <laughs> oh, okay, no. Okay, uh, But wait yeah, for something else. Yeah. No, so, someone's finding a great idea. Oh, well, they, what's yeah. the great idea then? Oh. to it. Just, we'll come to it then. So if you're called out next, you've got to come and send in an M4 screw to me here um, at Lineside Studios. Where can we find the address? It's in the link below. Just look for the sticker swap address. Okay, and it's Engine Shed Lane. It's in um, Skipton. BD23, 1TB. Oh, right, okay. So yeah. play that back slowly. You might get some bit. But yeah, it's in the sticker swap. Can you give me the two names? It so is. I've got to send First person in. was Sandy McNair. Sandy's won something, yep. brilliant. And the other one is Tom Bickerton on wow. the ferry. Well, Tom yeah. on the ferry. Tom on the ferry. On the electric ferry. Okay, so you two have won something if you send it to me. And when you do send it to me, um, okay, you've got, um, how long before they get their prize back? Uh, well, at least 28 days each. So back when I was a kid, whenever I won anything and I sent in my uh, coupons on the back of a cereal box, it could take up to 28 days for it to come. So uh, yeah, so just hold on. We're not very quick at posting back, even though we have got Joe back here in the unit, so we might be a bit quicker than we normally have. But you don't get anything to send me something. Go on, him. Yeah. UK Sparks came up with a good idea. So you cross on the filed coast over that way. He's, he's been t teetering to come across and do it. We just probably need to oh. find a suitable date. Well, he's got a Champions League at the top. Oh, yeah. And so they yeah. have to go head to head. The people who get into the Champions League. Oh, yeah. Oh, I like that. So we, we have like a... A special. Oh, 
top six or something, yeah. fighting out over... Wouldn't that be nice when we finish the other thing and we can have them in the special bar area that we're having? Yeah. Well, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Yeah. It'd be a good summer one, wouldn't Champions it? Champions League. We'll have the Brookie one. barbecue open. No, the Brookie burner open. What yeah. Brookie burner. Is Brookie in the top six? Uh, no, Ooh, he got reckons. You've got to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> he reckons. Yes. He, yeah, he, he thinks he can come back and do it sub minute three. Okay. So. That's good. Yeah. yeah. We've got to be careful because you've got a way up who can come back, and we? Because, yeah. yeah, we'd like new people to take it. When we start getting panicking, Brooksy will be back for a second attempt. Craig will be back up here and leaving in hospital again. He said, yeah, he'll come up as long as he doesn't end up in hospital. Yeah. He went somewhere else. I think he had his wedding anniversary, pulled his back and ended up in hospital. Right. The only two times he's been out in the house. like Uncle Albert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did fall, falling over on purpose trying to sue everyone. Good old Uncle Albert. Right, so I'm going to look at the list, so that means I just gently look over while you continue to talk to him. But I think, we've given, I think we're now going to say the following. Okay, this is, this is not officially the end. This is the end of what we call the main bulk of the um, actual show itself. So, as always, we couldn't do this show without and see him catch him out again. We can do it without... We can do it without Bago. Who else yeah. can we do it without? Uh, Nipex, Lou Palatoli, <laughs> and Lasico. Oh, yeah. Hold on, just before we leave Lasico, don't forget, obviously, as well, we have got the eFix Awards entries close at the end of this week. Okay, so um, so you can. Uh, how do we get involved? Let's get just go awards.efix.co.uk. Uh, obviously, the regular viewers all know about this anywhere. There's quite a few I recognise in there. I can see you've been active doing that. Uh, well, there's categories, obviously, from industrial to EV to smart, and our 30 under 30, so that's electricians aged under 30, yeah. who are doing some great things. Uh, make sure you get somebody to nominate you, or you can nominate yourself, that's fine. And we've had some nominations themselves, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, again, it, sometimes it's that tiny bit of effort. I think it takes less than five minutes to fill it in. It's your name and um, email address, name and the email address of the person you're nominating, the category, a small description, so a, a small description of why you've nominated them, you get an email sent to you saying confirm the entrance. Yeah, confirm the entrance. And then be, there will be a follow up, but it's just, yeah. Yeah, that gets you in the pot, doesn't it? Yeah. Just, just remember sometimes actually giving a nomination to somebody, whether they win or not, is sometimes quite a heartwarming and a nice thing to do, isn't it? Mm. That, you know, you're trying to help somebody else out by nominating them. And there is some, some great categories in there, isn't there? So, yeah, 30 under 30 being one of them. We've had, uh, yeah, we've had a few uh, few entries even more today, haven't we? One of our we busiest have, yeah. days. So, so it's, it's that last minute thing, isn't it? it and it yeah. always happens. So it will be uh, a lot of fun. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of follow-up for whoever goes on to win uh, those awards. Uh, we'll be doing a lot of content uh, yeah. later this year. On yeah, that. we're looking forward to that. Yeah, that's, that's really good. So from that point of view, if you've stayed for the bolt because you like whatever we do, whether it be Regulation Corner, whether it be the Electrician's Challenge, uh, you like those segments, they're all finished now. And we're going to slip into what we call the, the plug and socket, and eventually there will be an area that will serve beverages other than water. And I'd like yeah. to think that we'll be able to go there with another camera and uh, continue on the show. I've got this thing about TFI Friday. Um, they had a balcony area, obviously, where Chris Evans would be down, effective where the bands would be playing in the audience, and then he'd go up and he'd have cue cards and all the rest of it. I think, is it a week's time my balcony starts getting built? It is, yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to have, a, over there, there'll be a balcony, and in the balcony area, we're going to have a bar. Yes. So uh, hopefully we'll get that, I'll get my moment where I come down. So this is the plug and socket, so we'll, we'll try and answer some questions, yeah, we'll, we'll continue with some debates. Mm -hmm. But thank you, if you watched the main show and you enjoyed it, I really appreciate your time, and we'll be back in two weeks. Yeah. Right, we're in the plug and socket. I like to say, Gary, this has, in terms of numbers, has it been, been, we've still got 194 people wow. on at the end, which for us live yeah. is absolutely fantastic. So thanks, everybody, yeah. for, for tuning but, in. Yeah, we do appreciate it. Yeah. We, we, yeah I, I, hopefully, you noticed that we put a lot of effort into today, didn't we? <laughs> Joe put a lot of effort in and stress and all the rest of it. These things don't just put themselves together. We try and make them look uh, amateurish, don't we? Which I think we've done well. We try and make mistakes. Take it to another them. level. Yeah, Wi-Fi, no sound, and bringing the wrong assets in. But that's planned into most of these. So I think this week we'll have no sound. Yeah. And then the following week I'll bring in the wrong asset. Yeah. yeah. And all that. So yeah, it takes a lot of planning to make it look this average. Yeah. Now we're really chuffed. If you could see us now, we'd be high-fiving each other inside. <laughs> I mean, we got through that one. So uh, yeah, hopefully the internet stayed strong as well. So that's good. Come on in, have we got anything that people want to rumble through on the questions? Uh, oh, any idea if the wear or soccer will be ever available in uh, metal clad, uh, light switches, etc. Uh, it seems just to be a double socket in white. That's right from an MK perspective that they've only done the test double the socket. Yeah, see the what the response is. And then I think there is a roadmap to do other products in the range. Yeah. Uh, but it depends, depends on how that first one goes because the American Honeywell, big 
conglomerates. They need to tick all sorts of boxes and things like that uh, to do that. But um, France and Germany, any screws in their sockets and switches? Oh, no. them, so. <laughs> Hasn't been for 20 years. Yeah. We'll get there. Yeah. So the, the, the thing is, it's that association. We all believe, don't we? A levered connector. We, we always associate the word Wago with it, don't we? Yeah. The, the style, we've all seen them in light fins, so where you just push them in, don't you? And you, you, you for twist a long them, time. Yeah, they've been there forever, and they? they're more a German-style connector. Mm. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, it's going to come, in it? It's yeah. going to come. And this all gets me while you're looking in there. People will say, well, it's just playing into the DIY's hands. Well, I think, well, the DIY's got to be able to use a screwdriver to put the screws in the front of the socket. We've got a problem? No, no, you carry okay. on that. Too. Okay, oh, sorry, yeah. the hand out. So yeah. you've got to put the screws in the front of the socket, so you're going to have to be able to work the screwdriver at that. So when we look at the back of the socket, if a DIY's gone in there, surely they've still got the same screwdriver, they're going to work that to make the connections in the back. It's to make a, a, a proper electrical connection with the right amount of tension as the lever goes down, for me. So therefore, it's great for electricians. There's always going to be people who dabble and dibble. And as electricians, I'm sure we've put skirting board up. I'm sure we've attempted to do some plumbing in the past. I'm sure we think we're average at plastering. I'm sure we think we can do lots of other trades works, but you know, yeah. we don't class that as DIY because obviously we're electricians. Yeah, but I've got this uh, oh, household yeah. as electrical guide, Gary. Wow, I yeah. bet you had that from, I bet you bought that from <laughs> New, did you? Let's have a look. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah. As well as electrical guide, it gives people all sorts of things you can do. Yeah. From repairing irons, putting immersion heaters in, and this dates from 1959. So okay. somehow... You were 20 when you bought it then? Yeah, somehow I respect um, that um, DIY is not a new thing. Oh, right. Okay, so you, is there any gems in there? Is there a section? Uh, well, I'll have a look. Socket outlet ring circuits. Oh, right. Not ring finals. No. Okay. Well, let's have a look what just, gems just, we can just, find in here. 90, page 98. Oh, a little bit of a JB there. Little oh, joint that's, box. that's where you got your diagrams from. Hey, there's nothing wrong with a joint box. <laughs> yeah. uh, They've done brilliantly there. Yeah, PVC overhead bus, but wiring in concrete. Ooh. Look at that, we've got the ring main here. Final circuit, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's, it's common practice now, especially in new houses, to install sockets on a ring circuit, which is protected by a 30 ampere single pole fuse. Oh, right, okay. Any oh. mention of an AFDD in there? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> RCD, yeah. voltage strip. No, no, no. Okay, there so is, uh, clock connectors. Remember them? Um, the two, the two pin ones with a like a bell wire in them. That ones. Well, I don't know. I, I don't remember them. Oh, Clearly, right. you do. Showing your age there, Gary. So well, it's, uh, customer wants yeah, one. Yeah. I'm up for it. Bit of cash. <laughs> Bit of cash. Yeah. All right. Okay. So time lag switches. So that's that one. That's 1959. <laughs> this one's dusty. What's this one then? This is electric wire from 1935. Okay. <laughs> yeah. is there a Including motor and dynamo circuits. Okay. So, Ooh, what's that one? What's another one of your oh, diagrams? Well, let's, let's look. That's a, that's, is that a lighting circuit? I can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Oh, that is one of my circuits. I've done some great videos on these. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Brilliant. So is this is this a, a technical Stanos manual? Stanos concentric wiring. Okay. The so old Stanos. So is this a is this a technical manual or was it for the DIY? No, I suspect it's got uh, differentials in the front. So I'm just thinking it's, it's fresh air. It must be one of Joe's books. Okay. Well, because he can read. Yeah. Okay. And understand what he's read. Yeah, well, it's quite. Well, well, you can read. Okay. Well, you, you know, you know. I can't even see it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Go on then. So what else has come through then as you're going through your vintage uh, book collection? I'm going through that. Uh, uh, semiconductors. What we got there? Uh, if it's gonna be, he's going to be in Bolton. Well, he can get here for an, an hour from Bolton. That's UK Spark. Yep. Ooh. Yeah, DIY stands for destroy it yourself. Yep. <laughs> That's it. Uh, yep, we're all <laughs> been there. Uh, Dimplex can't get stuff for storage heaters. Right, okay. Mm. Anything else? Uh, AFDD is still expensive. Who's the best price one? We don't know yet. No. That's it. We expect to see a flurry. A little bit on electric shock here. Let's earth that metal kettle. You know, it's, uh, yeah, loving it. A bit of an earth path. I think we've done a nice Q and A video on that, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. AFDDs. Yeah. Who knows? Again, I don't think they're going to mandate them on every circuit under the amendment too. But who knows? We'll wait and see. Yeah. Uh, be interesting, won't it? But well, we'll we put a survey out on the community tab. We did uh, a couple of weeks ago, and that was AFDDs. Do you think they'll be on? All types of circuit, certain types of circuit, or certain types of application. And I okay. think what we're, we're getting the, the hint that it might be certain types of circuit in certain types of applications. Right, okay, so a combination of both. Well, we'll see, won't we? When that yeah. drops, then we'll, we'll, we'll be pouncing on it. But yeah. normally there's a lag, isn't there? There's normally a, a six month lag before it, it comes in. I know there was talk there wasn't going to be, but I'm sure there'll be a time for people to adjust their thinking going forward. But I was terrible when the regulations, you know, when I was doing more install works 
become quite paranoid about the changes and right. you know you sort of building up to them and all the rest of it actually once people and it's even better now with youtube people dissect those changes they're never as bad as you think but when you were darting around back in my day trying to scramble bits of information what earth and radiators <laughs> and uh, well, metal window frames no i think you'll find that's our stephen colleague yeah but yeah i mean it's yeah i've even got a drawing in one of my um college books that earth the metal frame and the uh, the bathroom yeah everything was earthed but people think Obviously, they've been in America for a long time. Or the uh, what, what has AFCIs. been? Oh, oh, right, okay. So, yeah, they're not earth. earthy metal frames. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ground, the, ground, the, ground, ground, ground. The hot wire. The hot wire. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. it. Is it neutral over there? Uh, yeah, it's still neutral. So, it's ground, hot wire, and neutral. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, they've been over, over 20 years. Yeah, and if you look on a well known online retailer, who will do next day delivery for free, <laughs> even from the US in certain products? Okay, we'll yeah. send you one, will it? Uh, yeah, they're, they're like thirty dollars. Oh right, and how would you describe those AFDDs? Uh, well, you remember the Crabtree C fifty breakers? Yes, those those big brown things were yeah, they still yeah. made in Bakelite? Yeah, that with a massive action on them. Yes, yeah, massive terminals. Yes, I'd suggest they're a little bit agricultural, a little right. bit like them, really. So, <laughs> but in America, they've got so much space that that board's down in the cellar, isn't it? or in the game panel, room, yeah, panel, panel, panel. panel. Sorry, I apologise. That panel's down in that area. Yeah, they're pretty much on every circuit in the states. Yeah. But uh, um, when I spoke to Shahid about this, because Shahid's got a bee in his bonnet about AFDDs, one way or the other, I'll leave it at that. And he said that the, the big thing over there, though, is their construction, their building is predominantly timber. Mm. So of course, any sort of sparking arcing which way you want to go with it is not going to be uh, well received by the building yeah and they all have a lot of cellars as well so yeah obviously the cellar catches fire firefighter walks in and goes through the straight floor. through the floor yeah 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 we think again yeah we put we put out on instagram didn't we today that that little video of premature collapse of the wiring system i po- semi apologize to the person i put that out and every time we put that video out we put it out where we did the clip now the wrong way round. Well, it could be on a wall, so the clip now has nothing to do with it. It could be on a slope of a ceiling, couldn't it? On a rafter, etc. And everybody, the early people on that video, all say the nail should be at the bottom. Are we hoping that tiny bit of nail will prevent that cable from collapsing? Mm. I'd like to think we're not. It's all about the fact that a PVC clip will give way and a metal clip won't. But I did get a little bit sharp with one person. I'm sure they're not yeah. watching this because I think the, I think we're no longer being followed by them. But yeah, I just get fed up with people <laughs> saying you should have the nail at the bottom. Yeah, I'm just looking in it to see if there's anything on the EV charging. People did say, well, remember, we did have <laughs> electric milk floats for quite oh, a while. There is something on batteries. Okay. So let's just see what we're doing on batteries back in. Uh, yeah. 1935, you have to TT. Do you remember the milk float coming up the road very quietly <laughs> with just a jangle of the bottles in the back? Uh, well, no, we, we couldn't get electric out. It was, right. uh, yeah. yeah. So, and again, it's one of those things, isn't it? When did that stop? When did the, when did the electric milk float, and I'm, I'm 47, so lots of us won't remember as far back as I do, at what point did that stop? You know, uh, when it no, just, I think there's did, still a few out there. Yeah, and we get ours now delivered by bottles, but I don't think it is, in, I'll have to check, is it really early in an electric vehicle? He might be. Um, because my wife wanted to go back to the fact that we send back the glass bottle and it's recycled every time. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah the, the one day you wake up and uh, you find your mum's buying your milk from Tesco's, doesn't yeah. you? Or uh, cool. other there's retailers. A, there's a lot of batteries in here. Is that? Oh, yeah. Is that a trembler bell there? Yeah, got? it is, yeah. We've got the, yeah. <laughs> wow, I've drew one of them in my <laughs> notes as well at college. Never come up in the exam. Dash pots were another one. We had to draw them. Pendulum type indicator for the servant's bell board. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not serving at my house. Is yours still all right, your servant? <laughs> No, nah, it's either Do you want to check the comments? Have we got anyone left on? That's the first <laughs> yeah, thing. We're, we're still in East London, they're still gone. Okay, thank yeah. you. You can buy them refurbished. If you look on, online, you can buy a... I was toying with the idea, couldn't we? Could, uh, oh, a refurbished what? Milk float. Oh, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. No, because we, we need a vehicle for me to go out in these colleges. <laughs> I can just see me being Gary the fastest, yeah, in the <laughs> West. in the West. Yeah, in the West. Gary yeah. the fastest e-fix driver in yeah. the West. But imagine taking one of those old... Who used to make them? Ah, who used to make them? The milk floats. Don't know. Smith's, Smith's industry. Okay, wow. Sir Clive Sinclair was ahead of his time, wasn't he? Yeah. The first calculator. Well, imagine putting a modern computer. battery in an, an old fashioned style milk floor. Well, somebody will, wouldn't yeah. it? I'd send it down the, stri- the quarter mile strip with, <laughs> yeah. with a Tesla in it. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Any yeah. questions? Anything else I want us just to rumble through? Uh, no, as people think, no, people won't pay a thousand pounds for a consume unit unless it's mandated. So. But it's funny, though, isn't it? We won't pay a thousand pounds for a consume unit. Yeah. Yeah. When we moved from coal fires yes. to gas boilers, yes. suddenly, they, were, they were huge money. Yeah, huge money. Yeah. People put them in. And then, and the good news, and this is great for plumbers, 
probably love this. People have them serviced every, every year. year. Yeah, yeah. And they get nervous if they don't have it serviced. I haven't had it done yet. Yeah. It's coming up with a cold snap. I'm going to fire it up again. Yeah, I mean, it's that. But again, you, you think of the house, that one thing you don't want to not work is that Wi Fi, and that's plugged into a socket outlet, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I, I would imagine now if the boiler packed up, you'd be going, it's okay, kids, the Wi Fi's running water's now, uh, uh, not, it's okay, the Wi Fi. The Wi Fi! The Wi Fi's got off! Yeah. <laughs> As you come running around the house, what are we going to do? 4G's rubbish. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's progress again, isn't it? I, so I imagine we said the same when, when RCBOs were introduced as an alternative to RCCBs, wasn't it? And they were God, nearly £40 each. Mm. Well, we're never going to be fitting them at £40 each when you can get a circuit breaker for six back in the day or whatever it was. Yeah. Now, if you see a board with, it hasn't got RCBOs on, you're jumping on going, well, you've only got RCCBs. Mm. What are you doing? Selectivity. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it'd be interesting. They weren't a keen runner of 60 quid each, were they? No. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> but it's, but it's, I think electricians are all the same, and it, nobody really likes huge changes, do they? No, but we'll go the other way. I'd say a lot of houses now have probably got more circuits. Yeah. 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 You know, remember, it, you know, go back. What the house used to have a socket. Well, you might be looking at two sockets or two lighting circuits and one socket circuit in the cooker. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yep, in the whole house. And then suddenly MCBs drop to two quid and people scatter them around like, uh, yeah, like, uh, yeah, yeah, wiring, wiring, you know, circuits on each floor if you've got a townhouse and you know, yeah. and all the rest of it in it, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, the doorbell's got its own circuit. You know, there are all, all these things that used to. You, yeah, you yeah, used to be patched into other circuits. Yeah, yeah all, all, So if AFD is coming, is you going to go? Oh, Ooh, right. we're back to that. Yeah. <laughs> Do I really need an extra circuit? I just kind of just load that one up a little bit more. Especially you know LED lighting. It's like we still have. You know, how many lighting circuits? Outdoor lights, indoor lights, upstairs yeah. lights, downstairs lights. Well, I've got at least three in my house lighting circuits, maybe four. Yeah, which is fine, yeah, one floor could go. When was the last time you had a lighting circuit trip off? No, yeah, not, not the lighting. The, the wife's got the hangover. She, uh, she's replaced a hairdryer now. That used to take me, me breaker out regularly. Yeah. And I've got, yeah, but that's appliances got, with leads on. Yeah, well, You've got Britain's most expensive consumer unit. I have. I've got, a, I think, a 17-way AFDD board from Wirelex. And the keen-eyed amongst you who saw the video noticed that four blanked ways weren't had those, you know, the, the little metal blanks. I've got one of them in the board. The other four ways were left with AFDDs in. So I think I've got 600 quid worth of blanks in my board. But you mm. never know. If that AFDD needs to come into action, I've got it in there, and I ain't got to go and find the 140 quid to put it in, have I? Yeah. Even if they come down in price. So, um, mm. yeah, future-proof me installation there. Yeah. Okay. Oh, someone's asked. We're back at the start, yeah? We're back at the start. Can you pull the main fuse legally? <laughs> Chances are, no, you won't. No. Not in the near future. Um, but you will be able to get in touch with someone who can, and they'll come out and do it in a timely manner yeah. at a reasonable price. And with a, a set process. Yeah. So, so what they'll do then, if they've put the process in place, it's like anything. So the, the argument now is it's not easy, you can't do X, Y, and Z. They'll put a process in place. And then if you decide not to do it, then there could well be a, immense repercussions for not following the procedure. Don't get me wrong. If you come to, to an installation that you believe is dangerous in some way, uh, electrically dangerous, then you can obviously call the supply authorities and they may give you permission to pull that fuse out to prevent danger. Okay, yeah. that might be a case of that but it's not a case of just being able to willy-nilly whip out the 100 amp fuse. And I think it's become a bit of a, a blasé thing, especially with social media, isn't it? Yeah, you know, there's, there's a million yeah. and one Pablos out there, aren't they, whipping yeah. them out and, and yeah. all the rest of it because of X, Y, and Z. So they'll try and put a system in place for you. So mm -hmm. that's good. And we, we address that at the front. So if you just joined us now, when this finishes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go back first to the 15 start. minutes, we spend a lot of time going over that. So that's uh, really good. Yeah. Anything else that's in there? Is no, Joe still all... in the comments? Yeah, he's still hammering away there. Bless him. Uh, da, da, da. No, I think we're all right. I think we're winding down. There's still loads of people on. No. Yeah. What? Is there no good football on tonight? How many people yeah. are on? Some people have said we do clash with the NIC EIC. Apparently, <laughs> they do a webinar. Do they? We're making people choose. Right, okay. That's fine. Mm. Darren Staniforth used to work for them. All oh, right. Well, he used to work for Scoremore. Yeah. He works for CEF Live. Yeah. See us in 12 months. Let's see where he works in 12. <laughs> yeah. Answers on a postcard. Gary at EFIX. Yeah. <laughs> where's Darren? <laughs> where's Darren, yeah. Oh, it's classic though, because um, Scott will put a thing out. Jobs, so they've done a video, sort of jobs for electricians on that. And yeah. Darren was leaving at that point. I nearly put CEF in the comments. <laughs> where's the jobs for electricians? <laughs> City Electrical Factors? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so we're clashing with them. They yeah. do some good stuff over there. I've got some good friends at the uh, NIC. Mm -hmm. Okay, over there. 
Yeah, all right. They mm -hmm. go live to every platform at the same time. I think they do Facebook and everything at the same time. So they don't watch them on all the platforms. Yeah, so they don't have electricity channels. No, they don't. Yeah. No, they don't. Yeah. They don't have internet that falls over. Yeah, there we go. So the amendment, when is it open? Well, no, the amendment, uh, when does the amendment come out? At the end of... 27th, 28th, Joe's on it. Yeah. Joe, Joe's going to, hopefully, we'll have an electronic on the minute it arrives. Yeah. Cool, we'll, that'd be a good video, wouldn't it? Reacting to the change. Would we like Joe to do an extended regulation corner? He reads it. And just reads the whole amendment two out. Ah, oh, the classic, wasn't yeah. it? That's, Can you imagine yeah. that? If he, if he read that for, what, an hour and an hour and a half, hour and 20 minutes, you wouldn't need to buy it. You just zip through. If we timestamp it really well, you can just find the sections, you'll read it to you. Yeah. That's electricians don't like reading anyhow, do we? No. Joe's the exception to the rule, I think. Mm. Yeah, sounds good. Let's get him to do that. Yeah. What do I think? Yeah. yeah. Should we get Joe just to come up and just... Uh, read it. Read, yeah. read special that regulation corner special has to read the whole lot. Yeah, that sounds good to me. What, what time it drops the book when you get it from nine o'clock in the morning? <laughs> Ah, March the 28th, you're saying, there you go, ah, he's, already, he's in. He's in, yeah. yeah, he would be, wouldn't he? Yeah. He's got a place on his bookshelf ready for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. deep-seated yeah. understanding and all that, he'll be into it, so it's all mm. good stuff. Anyone know the football score? I think it was a Chelsea, is Chelsea playing tonight, young'un? Yeah, it's 1-0. Two? Chelsea. Who scored? Uh, you don't know. I'll take it they're through then, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so Chelsea are in the final, it'll be interesting. Yeah. All right. Anything else, Gordon, or are we going to... No, I think we're, I think we're in there. Audiobooks BS7671, there you go. Oh, that's, that's imagine from Richard Gordon. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, Joe reads the regular... Yeah, I'd send you to sleep, wouldn't it? <laughs> just slip into bed with you. No, you think, I'm oh, just going to relax, just put Joseph on. Oh, there he is, part one. <laughs> and there you go. Fantastic. Never got to special locations, Joe, yeah. but thank you. Okay, so as always, we've oh, had no, a, people, oh, yeah, people oh, oh, live oh, oh. regulation. No, no, we're about doing it live. We'll get Ooh, Joe yeah, when they're released and do it. Yeah, well, it might be long because obviously we're going to have to we're going to have to fight our way through the book. But it'll be like I'll say, right, uh, um, AFDDs, hmm. find it. Are they in? But we'll have a quick scan through. Right, they're in on every single circuit, every single house. You've got to retrospectively fit them on every single <laughs> consumer you've ever been to as an electrical contractor. <laughs> and then obviously we'll go to the next one. So, uh, uh, there's, yeah. a, there's a Mohammed Abdul Hussein in Gary. On other news, apparently Bitcoin's gone up. <laughs> oh, I think we know who that is. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we, we yeah, we've got some Bitcoin friends, and we are uh, our wonderful uh, what, uh, restaurant owner, yeah. uh, Mastabs uh, Mohammed. I call him that. He goes by Abel, name. Abel. Abel. Yeah. So yep. he's uh, a big fan of the Bitcoin. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, he, and he, he was grinning ear to ear a few weeks ago when Bitcoin was up, <laughs> but it was a bit. Uh, well, it's subdued this week. Yeah. He's, he's never told his uh, wife that he owns a bit of Bitcoin. Right. Yeah. Can't wait to meet her. Yeah. <laughs> he owns quite a bit of coin as well. Yeah, it'd be an yeah. interesting conversation. Yeah. What a lovely bloke. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we go there once a week. We mm -hmm. went Monday. We didn't go there today, did we? We had a, we had a pizza today, so we uh, broke with tradition. Yeah. And uh, yeah, when's Amendment 2 coming? We'll try and get a definitive answer on that one. That's What's that? Get, when does it actually apply from? Yeah, we think six months. We did yeah. do a dig around, but someone said 12. I don't think it's 12. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it generally tries to start either bang in the middle of summer, don't it, mm. in the past, or the first of the new year. So it'd be interesting to see when it comes in. I'm sure if a Mark Allison was in there, he'd be able to flourish us with the details, but Mark's probably yeah. gone off to spend some time with those dogs. Yeah. So uh, that's all good stuff. So. I think we're going to, I think we're going to, I think we're going to say again, ma yeah, I'm, I'm the second one. <laughs> massive thanks, because we think we held the biggest number, which is how many? We're still at 150. Yeah. 150 people managed to stay on for us two, just rambling away, looking through a few old books that Gordon bought from New back in the, <laughs> the early 40s. Okay, so we, we just ramble in on here in what we call the plug and socket. Eventually that'll be hopefully in a different area in the building, and we'll just go back and we'll relax. Hopefully then we'll be able to perhaps you know, meet a few guests in the bar area and things like that, and we can have visitors up as well. Remember, if you want to come down to Lineside Studios, you just need to reach out to us on social media and you need to book yourself in. Remember, probably a Wednesday when we're not live is probably our best day, but chance your arm. But don't just turn up. We had a couple of people turned up randomly, didn't they? And they did Fridays, didn't they? And we yeah. weren't doing Fridays at the start. So. Or out on site. Or, yeah. yeah. Well, Other end of the country in deepest Wales or something like that. Yeah. So. <laughs> Deepest Wales. <laughs> that was good when we went to Deepest Wales. <laughs> so we thank you, and we're going to end our live stream there, and we'll be back in two weeks when we go live again. We've got a really exciting um, electrician challenge as well, haven't we? We've got the fastest South Africa ever to take it on, haven't we? Yeah. Okay. But we thank you for your time. Have a lovely evening. Okay, and we'll see you soon.